Hi and welcome to today's video. My name is Caro and on this new section on my YouTube channel I will be sharing with you some of my favorite elixir recipes so we can make an amazing drink together. And the idea behind this new section is that we make an elixir recipe together and then we can sit and have a conversation together. I really wanted to make this new section on my channel because I would love to be able to share more about the wisdom of the plants that I've been learning throughout the last few years. So in this new section of my channel, first we will be doing an elixir recipe together. I will be guiding you through every step of making this beautiful plant-based beverage together while also explaining some of the benefits that each of these plants and fungi that we will work in with have for our bodies and our spirits. And then we will be diving into a conversation that is related to the purpose that this drink has, as well as some ideas and maybe share some food for thought or just keep all of our inspiration, our creativity, our love for planet Earth, and also some deeper questions for our own path in this flying rock in space together. So for the first episode of this new offering, I really wanted to touch base on a topic that is something that I think a lot and I embody a lot in my day-to-day -day life, which is how can we stay connected to nature while living in a city? And the recipe that we will be doing today is a mind and intuition latte. I first want to share with you all the ingredients that we will be using to make this elixir drink together and after we do this drink together we can all, we can sit down virtually and have a chat and a conversation on the topic of how can we connect to nature while living in the city So when we think about staying connected to nature while living in the city, the first thing that comes to mind for me is having a very clear mind, being able to really feel this energized, connected, enhanced thought process while at the same time staying while at the same time having a very low level of cortisol connecting to our third eye to our intuitive side and more to these like soothing and flowing energy that we have so the mind and intuition latte that we will be working with today consists of the following ingredients we will be using blue lotus which is a flower that has been used by ancient Egyptians and is still used up until today throughout the world. This ancient flower is used a lot to enhance our third eye. Then we will be using mukuna. Mukuna's main function in the human body is el dopamine. Then we will be using a seven mushroom adaptogenic, which is mixed with a little bit of cacao. The cacao's purpose on the seven mushroom adaptogenic is that besides giving it a delicious flavor, cacao's fat also helps enhance and make our body able to absorb all the properties of the mushrooms easier in our body. And in order to make of these a latte and give it more of that frothy, milky flavor, we will be using coconut cream. You are totally welcome to do this elixir only with the ingredients mentioned, or you can add any sweetener of your choice. Uh, my favorite choices for sweeteners are either coconut sugar or some sustainably sourced honey. So yeah, grab your ingredients and Let's get started. First, we will boil our filtered water. We will add our blue lotus and half teaspoon of mukuna. Add your hot water, mix in your mukuna so it dissolves, and let it steep for at least five minutes. In the meantime, we will add one teaspoon of our seven mushroom adaptogenic to our mug and your favorite sweetener, if any. 
After five minutes, add a tad of the steeped blue lotus and mucuna to your mug and mix. You can use a frother, whisk or blender. If you like it silky, you can add coconut cream powder and froth away. After frothing, you can top your mug with more of your steeped blue lotus and mucuna. Decorate with some blue lotus petals and voila, your mind and intuition latte is ready. So now that we have our mind and intuition latte, I would first like for all of us to start asking ourselves, why is it that we feel the urge to connect with nature while we live in a city? And I know that some of you might relate to this. This is something that I really believe in. And that is that the environment where we are really affects how we feel. And there has been a lot of research done that really makes us realize how connecting with nature gives us overall well-being. It helps reduce our blood pressure, it reduces our heart rate, it reduces our muscle tension, and it also reduces the amount of stress hormones that our body produces in the day-to-day, -day, like levels of cortisol. And on the other hand, being surrounded by nature really helps us with psychological well-being, as well as helping us feel that we are connected with other living beings. And something that I've been thinking a lot about is that being surrounded by nature can look very different for all of us and it can look different in different stages of our lives or in different days. So being surrounded by nature is not only being in a beautiful forest or an abandoned beach somewhere. I think that it's something that is really important is for us to remember that nature is everything that is not man-made and also remember that we humans are nature ourselves. And that brings me to the topic that I believe that we can really connect to nature in different ways while we are in the city. So when we say that nature is everything not human made, it can be relating to the four elements or other living beings that we can really take care of while we are in the city. And there are so many ways that we can connect to the four elements while in a city. We can connect to fire by lighting up candles, by cooking something and eating something warm. We can also smudge ourselves. And when we are thinking about water, we can think about our blood. We can think about the water that we drink every day. Where is that water coming from? which actually can also start shifting our perspective on where we source our waters and we can connect to air by opening our windows or taking a walk around where we live <sighs> or just sitting down and taking a very very deep breath paying attention to our breathing for a little while we can connect to the earth by just literally putting our feet on soil or if you have any house plants by touching the soil in your plants by eating root vegetables we can also reconnect to a grounding experience by playing with animals if we have any pets just playing with them is a very grounding and therapeutic um, moment that we can have and Something that I love to do on my day-to-day -day life is include daily rituals that really help me reconnect with nature, like all the plants that I have on my studio. Right now I'm on my friend Marcela's house. I'm plant sitting for her and she's also in Brooklyn and she has a lot of plants in her space. So just taking the time to water them, to caress each leaf, to clean them and not doing it in a rush is 
a very beautiful way that we can also connect to nature by lighting candles at night and by giving gratitude to everything that is surrounding us that is not man-made and just giving ourselves the time and space to either have a new moon or a full moon ritual it's another way of connecting to the cycles of nature and the cycles of the planet and one of the main reasons why I love full moon rituals is because we because it's not only an opportunity to connect to the cycles but if we start bringing the elements into our rituals like a candle, water, maybe a tea, some offerings all of these elements can be in our homes in the city and on the other hand something that I also love to feel is remembering that we are made from the elements and we have so many living beings living inside ourselves that are made from more natural things and it is wonderful just to be able to recognize that by giving ourselves a little time each day opening the windows and drinking water and doing it intentionally because a lot of these things are things that we actually do on our day-to-day -day lives all the time but putting an intention and being conscious of every little thing that we do in order to connect to nature can really help us remember that we are not robots inside the city, we are nature. I feel that we carry a jungle inside of our bellies no matter where we come from. We have a beating heart and we have blood and we have and we need to breathe in order to be alive and drink water and hydration so just remembering that we are made from these elements is also a therapeutic um, exercise that we can do in our day-to-day -day lives and as i was just mentioning having houseplants is another beautiful way in the one we can connect to nature in our homes I think one of the most important things to remember is that we cannot survive without nature. So however your day-to-day -day life looks, there are ways in the ones you are connecting to nature, maybe the foods you eat and maybe just giving five seconds before eating each meal to thank the farmers that grew your food. Maybe you grow your own food or even if you get it in a supermarket and it comes frozen or packed because that, those are the conditions and the circumstances you find yourself at, it's also coming from nature. So just giving a little time to think, to think about that and put that intention is also a beautiful way we can use and if you've seen my channel before you know how much I talk about meditation and yoga because I feel those are daily rituals that really help me remember my natural rhythms and by remembering our natural rhythms we come back to the natural rhythms of planet earth of our own nature of our own cycles and there are two more things that I would like to touch base before finishing this conversation one of them is depend that depending on which city you find yourself at there might be some parks around you and maybe just taking a walk around your block looking at the sky for a little while if there's any park taking off your shoes and touching the earth and i can't talk enough about how we can all connect to nature for free and we don't need to go to the fanciest yoga studio or we don't need to go to a retreat in Bali if that's not something that we are capable of doing right now or maybe it's something that you're not interested in doing right now but going to the park and touching the soil is free and that's something that I have started incorporating in my routine since I moved to New York especially in the summertime and whenever it's not pretty cold and even being in a hectic city as New York City can be I try and really find the space to either go to the park or go to the river at the waterfront and in summertime go to the beach or just go outside and stare at the sky for 20 minutes and see how the clouds are moving really helps me 
ground myself and reconnect with why am I alive in this planet instead of just being this like con the, this robot that is always working and the last thing that I would like to mention before finishing this video is what we are drinking today one of the main ways that I connect to nature while living in a city is one of my most dear and sacred relationships with the plant kingdom and the fungi kingdom which is drinking different plant medicines and this is something that I also wanted to touch base because as this new section in my YouTube channel will be something that I will be putting out every new moon um, and we will always be making a recipe of plants or fungi that we drink and on that topic, I think that it's wonderful that we can work with plants and by that what I mean is we are not only intaking plants and I think that our relationships with the plant kingdom go way further than looking up the Wikipedia of what are the benefits these plants can give us. I've come to realize that thinking of how can I use these specific plant is a very capitalist way of seeing our relationship to our plant friends and I think that their relationship with plants is that it is a relationship that we build and it goes both ways the plants give us a lot of their medicinal benefits but we also but I also think it's important and it's wonderful when we can think how are we supporting the plant kingdom and how are we supporting this specific plant that we are working with at the time. So one of the ways that I do that is by giving plants the spotlight in my paintings and in that way I am using my platform and also my YouTube videos to share more with others about the amazingness that I find in the plant kingdoms. And another way that we can support plants is supporting the communities that have worked with these plants for, for the longest and who have preserved the knowledge and are passing from generation to generation all the knowledge behind each of these plants. And thanks to them is that we are able to know how each of these plant medicinal plants are benefiting us so supporting the communities that have preserved this ancient knowledge is another way to give back to the plants or planting your own seeds having your own plants and just to finish i would also like to say that i really support the idea of working with one plant at a time or maybe two or three depending on how you're feeling and how each of these relationships is growing and this is something that I learned from my friend Goa Micaela who is a medicine woman and one of the things she touched based on on our course rituals around creativity is that we are meant to work with certain plants and we are not meant to work with others and it also depends on the timing so let's say I'm Right now I'm working with cacao and blue lotus and a few other plants, but I grew up next to cacao and I never felt that call to work with this plant for 27 years. And then at 27 is that I started building a relationship with this plant and there are a lot of ways in order in the ones we can start building a relationship with a plant or a fungi and it's important for us to acknowledge that it's not about just drinking all the elixirs and drinking all the medicinal plants one after the other, maybe having like five different ones the same day because at the end of the day we are not really understanding how we are communicating with each of these plants separately so I just want to invite you for you to dive deep and start building a connection with each of these plants one of the time to see how you feel, how to see how you feel, to see if you start feeling any downloads or any messages coming through when you work with each plant, maybe when you're meditating, maybe when you're sleeping and dreaming. So 
That's also something that I thought it's pretty important to touch base on, especially in this new section of my channel. If you are going to be making this elixir drinks with me, I think it's pretty important that we acknowledge the important of the importance of realizing how each plant makes us feel and also remembering that working with them for a long time really helps us understand the benefits, the physical and spiritual benefits of each plant. And it can also help us understand how we can give back to these plants for sharing with us all their magic. So I can just keep on talking forever, but I think I'm gonna wrap it up there. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If this is something that you like, subscribe to my channel. If you don't do so, you can also follow me on Instagram where I share pretty often. And if you like this new section on my channel, thank you. Thank you for sharing your time with me, for opening your hearts, for trusting in me and for not judging my process um, as I don't judge yours and if you do like this new section on the channel let me know because depending on that I will continue or not to do this chit chat with plants in our cups section and if you do like it please let me know let me know which topics you would like me to touch base on which uh, plants or drinks you're interested in trying out and yeah, I'm gonna be putting out this chit chat with a couple of plants videos every new moon. And I also want to give a shout out to the Funky Loft, which is where I will be shooting all of the chit chat with a couple of plants videos. If you love this location as much as I do, make sure to follow the Funky Loft on Instagram. This is the Funky Loft's Instagram. So thank you the Funky Loft for having me and for letting me shoot all this chit chat with a couple of plants videos. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Happy new moon. I will see you on my next video. Bye.